Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. For more than a decade, many of China's young, well-educated workers have made it their goal to join one of the country's internet giants. Companies such as Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, JD.com, and more recently, ByteDance. Tech jobs came with all the perks high salaries, large bonuses, social prestigious, and stock options that could potentially turn employees into millionaires at the next initial public offering. The workplace culture at these companies was appealing. On team building days, tech workers at some companies might get free trips to Universal Studios or ski resorts. At annual company galas, employees enjoy the live performances by pop stars, or in the case of Alibaba, a Michael Jackson dance by tech mogul Jack Ma himself. That heyday appears to be coming to an end. The Chinese tech industry is now battling regulatory crackdowns, harsh COVID-19 lockdowns, and a general slowdown in investment and consumer spending. China's biggest tech companies, including Alibaba and Tencent, are posting their slowest revenue growth in years and laying people off at an unprecedented rate. The two tech giants are reportedly planning to lay off tens of thousands of workers this year. Meanwhile, ByteDance has fired hundreds of people working on gaming and ad tech. Ride-hailing giant DD Chuxing has conducted company-wide layoffs. Xiao Hongshu, an Instagram-like social media platform, has cut at least 9% of its workers. And gaming streaming sites Huya and Douyu have collectively let go of hundreds of people. Zhihu, a platform similar to Quora, is estimated to have laid off 20% of its workforce, triggering disputes over severance pay. Take a look at Aaron Wong, who joined the Chinese social media company ByteDance at the age of 25. ByteDance is the parent company of TikTok. Wang thought she found her dream job. Located in a city in eastern China, Wang ran projects that gathered hundreds of millions of views on ByteDance's Douyin platform, China's version of TikTok. She said clients respect her and friends ask her for job referrals. In addition to a good salary, she enjoyed office perks such as free snacks and company souvenirs like mugs, tote bags, and battery banks. She described her colleagues as energetic young people who worked as dance teachers or fashion models on the side. Same-sex couples posted about their relationships on the internal forum. The company had an inclusive culture, a rarity at Chinese workplaces. For two years, Wong said things were going perfectly. Then, at the end of 2021, ByteDance abruptly cut the business she was working on, telling her team to choose between relocation and a layoff. Wong had to quit in order to stay with her family. Wong landed a new job at e-commerce firm JD.com in March this year. During the interview process, her manager, who had been there for eight years, assured her that the company did not take layoffs lightly. Two weeks later, Wong was let go on a video call, along with more than 100 other employees, including the manager. She was struck by anxiety. It's so hard to find a job. I couldn't even tell my parents about this, Wong said. China's tech sector is in bad shape now. Investors are increasingly looking for profits today, not the promise of returns tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Chinese economy is slowing, and Beijing has tightened the supervision of internet platforms. The result has been what analysts are calling a capital winter, as investors flee the cooling market. Several big tech companies have seen their valuations plummet and then forced to make their first large-scale layoffs in years. 
The series of regulatory crackdowns has wiped billions of dollars of value from tech companies and forced Ant Group and ByteDance to shelve their mega IPO plans. Instead of pursuing profits and expansion, managing political risks has become a new priority. Xing Sun is a political economy researcher at King's College London. He told online magazine Rest of World, the tech giants are intending to signal that they are not building empires or amassing undue influence that could threaten either the single party rule or Xi's leadership. Zero COVID makes things worse. Since the start of the pandemic, the government has put major cities under periodic lockdowns, sometimes forcing shops and factories to shut for months at a time. Industrial production, retail sales, and property sales have been failing in the recent months. According to executives and the recruiters, cost control is the tech industry's new mantra. While layoffs have become commonplace, most firms are unwilling to disclose detailed plans to reduce their headcounts. Instead, they refer to staff cuts by euphemisms such as uh, graduation, optimization, structural adjustment, or normal business. Ten tech workers who lost their jobs over the last eight months told the rest of the world they experienced a mix of shock, anger, betrayal, and in some cases, relief. Some have fought for compensation and others said goodbye in tears. During the JD.com meeting where Wong was fired, she recalled that a manager in his 40s cried as he thanked the staff for the work they had done. Wong said her colleagues often worked until 10 p.m. without getting overtime pay out of devotion to the company. The meeting ended with everyone wishing one another the best in their upcoming job searches. Rachel Chang, who attended a university in the U.S., lost her job as a product manager at the search engine giant Baidu last year. In November, the 29-year-old was called into a meeting with hundreds of others who were being let go. She still hasn't told her mother she was laid off, pretending instead that she is working from home. Weeks before she was let go, Chen's father died in a car accident. Chen doesn't want her mother, who was also in the accident, to worry. For many, the layoffs couldn't have come at a worse time. Xiao Hongshu and the podcast app Shimalaya fired the staff in Shanghai while they were confined at home by a weeks-long zero-COVID lockdown. The lockdown was stressful enough and then I was fired, said one Shimalaya worker in his or her 30s. This worker requested anonymity for fears of retaliation. Shimalaya always talks about a climbing high. I had naively believed it would stand by its values. Over the past decade, some millennial workers in China have gone through the grueling education system with hopes of joining tech companies. Wealthier families paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to send their children to Ivy League schools so they could fulfill the so-called big firm dream at an internet giant. Now, the layoffs have hit hard for those who have built their lives around a tech worker's robust income. For years, employees followed the billionaire tech tycoon's call for hard work and competed fiercely for promotions and pay raises, so they can afford to buy properties in major cities and send their children to expensive tutoring classes and then to go universities. Now, those workers must make new life plans that don't depend on a tech salary. That being said, the layoffs do not necessarily signal a long-term downturn for the tech industry. China's internet giants still have great growth potential, and the current wave of layoffs reflected the fact that the companies were pulling back from unprofitable businesses amid a bad economy. But for young workers who once viewed job offers from tech giants as tickets to success and who have worked 996 schedules, getting let go is a painful reminder that the internet whirlwind does not last forever.
Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.